Okay, guys. Um, so I think we can we can start away there now. It's two o'clock. Um, so just to get to know each other first, I think it would be nice to go around and um, just introduce ourselves, say our name, and what our favorite like pastime or sport is. So uh, my name's David, and I really like to go sailing. Uh, what about you, Mark? Uh, my name's Mark, and I like to go. I like playing Ireland. And who wants to go next? Hi guys, uh, my name's Fiakra. I work on the team with uh, David and Mark, and I'm really into music. Anybody else want to want to volunteer? All right, Ben, come over here. Thanks for that. Me? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. My name's Fabusha and I like drawing. That's great, Fabusha. You you're really gonna like the challenge at the end of today then. <laughs> We've got a Very great much. challenge for you. Hi there, there's someone texting in chat guys as well, Neve, and um, someone's name is Staycation. Could I, it's it's coming up on Teams of Staycation. What's, can I see what your, um, what your real name is? Or... Dermot is his real name. <laughs> Sorry? Dermot is his real name. Dermot. Great. Nice to meet you, Dermot. Thanks very much for that, Neve. Thanks, Neve. Okay, guys. Um, so, our plan for today, guys, is we're going to start off. We're going to learn a little bit about coding. Um, we're then going to go into a really fun experiment that Kevin and Mark have set up for us, um, where we're going to get put a little bit of that learning to the test. We're going to do a bit of practical coding. Um, and then finally, we're going to learn a little bit about asteroids. Um, we're going to see our animation. And finally, we're going to go off with our new challenge for next week. So is everybody ready? Okay, so we're going to start off with our animation from last week. Um, if anybody is here, they'll rec was here from last week, they'll recognize our characters. Second now, let me just pull that up for you guys. Here we go. Can everybody see that? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
as you can see there, our, uh, our, our intrepid characters have made it all the way off Earth and they were on their way to Mars once they encountered an asteroid belt. So um, luckily they made it through, uh, partially due to the big experience and skill of our pilot. Um, but a lot of it was actually down to something we call code or computer systems. Um, so first off for today, we're just going to have a little look through at a presentation we have to explain the basics about code. And once we have that done, we're all going to get a chance to go through and actually work with some code practically. So I'm going to share that up for us now. So. so. <clears throat> Can everybody see my screen again? Yeah. Perfect. So as you can see here, this big thing on, that you see on the left here is actually um, called the Turing machine. So this was built around the 1940s and this would have been what computers looked back like back then. And you see this now as something that takes up an entire room and you think it must be extremely powerful, but reality is, is just what we have nowadays is so much more high tech than what we had in the past. And all of the computing power that was on this machine can now be stored in such a smaller place. So for example, when NASA were using um, all of their systems to get the astronauts to the moon around 1969, they used 0 0.043 megahertz of computing power. Um, and like a lot of the time you hear people say, oh, you know, our phones nowadays, something that's really small, like fits in the palm of your hand can hold that. But we were doing a bit of research and we found out that it's actually toasters nowadays that some of us might have our, in our homes. Um, that actually have that amount of computing power. So our phones nowadays really have incredible amounts of power and the code and the work that goes into them is just really something to marvel at. Um, so going on, like we have our phones, but is there anything in your lives, guys, that you think that we need code to work as well? Because it really is a building block. So um, I might just go through and ask a few questions. Um, Vibusha, do you think there's anything in your life that needs code to work? No. Okay. Um, can we think about how are we looking at each other right now? We're all in different spots, um, but we're somehow able to talk to each other. What are we using? Zoom. Yeah, yeah, really good. So we're actually using Zoom and Zoom is what we would call a app or a program. And what would have happened when the people who created it in the first day, um, they would have gone through and hired people called software developers and they would have written lots of code. And then Zoom, which actually works off our computers as well, which also require code, um, is able to work. And we're all be able to sit in different places and still be able to talk to each other. So yeah, that's, that's a really good example. Thank you, Vibisha. Um, what about you, Niamh? Is there anything in your life that you think you, uses code? Um, not really. I don't know. No, okay. there actually isn't. Okay. Um, what about, so Vibusha said we're using um, Zoom. What, what are you using Zoom to, to work off? Are you using your phone or are you using um, possibly something one of your parents gave you? Um, my laptop. Okay, yeah, good. So laptops are another really good example. So they work off code, um, but they also work off hardware. So hardware is any of the physical parts of your computer that you see, like, you know, um, that are actually inside the computer. But still, along with that, um, there would have been a lot of code written to allow that computer to work. What about you, Jamie? Do you think there's anything you used before? Computer games. Yeah, absolutely. It's another really good example. So um, what kind of, what's your favorite computer game? I don't, I don't quite know. Okay, yeah, no, I, I can be the same sometimes. It's hard to pick. There's a lot of really good ones out there, isn't there? But yeah, it's, it's the same kind of thing as Zoom. So there's a lot of code that goes into creating one of those games. Um, it takes a long time and there's a lot of work in it, but the end product, I think we can all agree, is pretty fun. So is there anybody else that can think of anything, guys? Yeah. 
yeah, Dermot, do you want to type into the chat? Um, my favorite two video games. What, what, would, they, what would they be? Uh, Apex Legends and Titanfall 2. Oh, lovely. They're great ones. Yeah. There's definitely yeah. a lot of code behind them. So um... I'm halfway through the campaign in Titanfall 2. <laughs> well done. I don't think I could get that far. Um, so I think you're gonna you're gonna be pleasantly surprised because um Mark and Kevin have actually worked together today and uh, they've created a little video game that all of us can play. And um, we can see now in a second that we'll do be, be able to do a little bit more than actually play it because um, we can actually work through some of the code. So we'll move on there, guys. Okay. So um, does anybody think would their life be any different if we didn't have code? So say like in Vibusha, in your case, we, would, we didn't have Zoom or Dear mid, you didn't have any of your favorite games. Um, oh God, I wouldn't be able to survive. <laughs> I, think, I think definitely, yeah. Uh, there, there would definitely be some drawbacks. Um, or Niamh, what do you think if you didn't have your computer? Would, would life be any different? Is there well, anything? Well, if I didn't have my computer, I wouldn't be able to talk to my friends too. Yeah, that's a big thing, especially for the past year, hasn't it been? So. Um, we may not think about code when we're using it every day in our lives, but um, it really does give us some amazing advantages. Okay, so now bringing it back to space and back to our characters, we have an example here of a spaceship. So there's lots of different codes and lots of different systems that work together um, on a spaceship. And they all have to work together to make it all work properly. So for example, we have navigation. So navigation would be an example of where there's lots of different computer systems working together to make sure that the spaceship knows where it needs to go and that the crew know need where know where they need to go. So our example is the guys Lola and Kai are heading off to Mars. So it would all be pre-programmed before they go what path the spaceship has to follow. Communication then, the second one. That means that like what we're doing right now, they'll be able to talk to each other. So not just to each other, they'll be able to talk to the people back on Earth and make sure that all the information is getting relayed. Life support, extremely important as well. So any spaceship or like the space station would have this. So um, clean the oxygen that's there with you. It maintains the right temperature. But guys, what's most important for us today is because it's what our lesson is gonna revolve around is propulsion. So a little bit like what we did with the bottle rocket last week, the propulsion of the rocket is what actually makes it fly. And there's going to be another system to control that propulsion. And we're going to be doing a little bit of modeling on that today in our little game or experiment. Okay. So just again, this is our introduction to today's experiment. And we're going to be using a coding language called Scratch. So it's a free program developed by a college in the US called MIT. Um, and we're going to be doing one program today, but if you do find it interesting, guys, there's actually loads of free programs that are all up there and they're really interactive. So definitely check it out if you get a chance after two. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, I have two stuff. Um, I also know something for coding, DNA. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, yeah, go and ahead. I also have Scratch. Oh, great. Okay. You'll, you'll be able to tell us what to do. So <laughs> brilliant. And um, yeah, DNA is I, actually... I used to do lessons on Scratch. So it's really fun, isn't it? Uh... We've got some experts here already. <laughs> but um, yeah, absolutely. DNA is a really good example because um, most of the code that we're going to be talking about is code that's been written by a person, but um, DNA is actually the code that writes what humans become. So um, you can think of it as a code that instead of writing, for example, to create Zoom, you're creating entire people or animals. So yeah, really good example. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna pass you over to Mark, who's going to take us through a really fun game. So thanks guys. Thanks for that, Taylor. Um, so I know some of you have 
uh, don't play some scratch before, so I'm just going to start from scratch just for the people that haven't uh, never don't even know how to find it. So, one second now. Can you see that okay? Yeah, we got it. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, perfect. So, I'll just do it first and I'll show you how to do everything. And then I will let you have both of you, and then I'll talk to you. Everything. So, scratch, we're just typing in scratch. Right, this is what we have here. So, so it's in front of us here, but for people that don't have the same link, um, we just put in, we're going to the search bar, we put in Kevin K. Smith. 57. Kevin couldn't make today. He put all in the skill to make this. I'm just taking his glory for him. <laughs> um, so when we come into this, we can see down the bottom, Kevin has only one project here. So we'll click into this. And as we can see, as Kai and the team are doing, they're flying through space, rest what they're getting to Mars. And the main thing of getting to Mars is when you get there is you want to go out and see the place. So we have to be able to land. So we will use coding as David just talked us through how to use coding to land. So as we see, we're coming down and we're just pressing the space bar just, just so that we land. So I'll just show you through the coding that makes all this work. So we click on see inside and as we see, Kevin has all this ready for us here. Has it all done? Thanks, Kevin. Um, as we can see, for the first thing we have the sun, the sun brings all the light to us. Kevin has designed the way that every so often, that every every time it goes on, the sun, the light will change from every 10 uh, levels. So when we, he changes as well, so that when, when we land safely to the ground, as you can see here, is if, if we do it wrong, if we time it wrong, it'll come up. When I receive crash, switch to costume, so that means it'll change to, it'll change to, um, it'll restart it again as if we didn't safely land safely. Where, as we can see here, so switch to the text Valentine's Day, that means we've made it, we've landed. So if I go back to this and we land down safely, let's go, let's go, should come up. But yeah, let's go. That, thanks to Kevin's coding, that's all this here has led us to us. Whereas if we land, we don't land safely. You fell. Yeah, that's what happens then. So that's what this code in here is done here. So moving on to the spaceship, that's just the same thing again. So if we land and it comes onto its side, um, that's it's it's here. Um, here, yeah. So we can say change fall speed. So moving on to the main part of the coding is the thruster. So this is the part we're going to get you to play with, is fixing the thruster, because the thruster is the main part of the rocket, basically. So as we're landing down, we have to press the thruster. We can go back up in the space, but we need to land. Me. So we need to time it right and tap it down so that we land safely, land with the team. As you can see here, so when we press, um, so when the, this means here, that when the space bar is pressed, it means minus two up. So it's weird, it doesn't make much sense, but it does if you think of it. So as you can see on the top right here, if I it's coming down, it's going plus numbers, but every time I press the space bar, it's going minus, oh sorry. So we're fighting to come back up with the time with this, so we don't hit the ground too hard. So does anyone have any questions about this code and what we're going to be doing here? So what we're going to be doing is, we're going to be taking this apart when we all come together and we're just juggling around and we're going to try and piece it back together together. So does anyone have any questions? No? Do we want this, to, or go on through here? Or is is everybody in the program? Does everybody have the have the game open on their computer? I don't. 
I don't That's... too. Maybe put the link in the chat. Yeah, that's a good yeah, idea. That, that's a good idea. I can do that there now. Thanks for that. And we think of that. <laughs> okay, guys, I've sent the link in there. You should be able to click on that and go straight through it. I don't know what to do. So, drop me there. I'll go back out and you can copy what I do just to get back to the screen. So, if you want. Yeah, I think, I think just we go through it nice and slow again. Yeah. We'll go step by step. So, we'll open up our internet browser. We type in start. Are you on a are you on a computer? Are you the Visha? Are you on a tablet or what are you using? Tablet. Okay, okay. Uh, that that should be okay, shouldn't it, uh, Mark? Yeah, that should be perfect. If you have uh, internet and are just go into internet search, so or do a Google or Internet Explorer like that. Yeah, go to Google, right? Yeah, perfect. Think you go. Yeah, and just tell me when you have it open, I'll talk to you. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Okay. So type in scratch, C or S C R A T C H. Wait, what do we have to do? I don't get anything. So if you have, if you have, um, can you click on Correct. the link? Can you click on the link in the uh, in the chat? What link? So David just sent a link into the Zoom chat. Um, scratch. Oh. Oh I don't know. I, I didn't see the link. Sure, Mom. Do you think of that, Jenny? I think that. So, I type scratch. Do, do you have a Do you have a computer? Um, uh, sorry, what's your What's your name again? Um, the, the computer called Wafa Slama. Santa. Sorry. Santa. 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 Great. Um, do you have a computer, Santa? Yeah. Um, so, great, and is that is that handy? Do you have that nearby? Yeah. Great. So if you go onto your computer and you Google Scratch. Okay. Scratch. Wait. Yeah. Then. And then if you click on the website, uh, the, the website is called. What's the website called, Mark? Just Scratch and Game Pit. It's called what? So if you go, are you into Scratch oh itself? God, I'm not mute. Yeah. How do you wait? Oh. I can't hear you. Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. Click into Scratch. Yeah. 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 Click into Scratch. Yeah. Yeah. And then see, can you see the search icon there? Search? Oh. Yeah. Scratch. Yeah. Scratch. M-I-T. Scratch M-I-T. Yes. C R A T C A. Yeah, MIT. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, um, yeah, then. So, so can you see, can you see uh, the search bar below? It, where it says join yeah. scratch and sign in. To, yeah, see the left there. Um, scratch coding? Scratch coding. Do you mean that? So, I, so there's a search box. So should I search something on there? Yeah. Okay. yeah, perfect. So in the search, so K S M I T H five seven. Did you get that? I K I I. S. No, K S K S M. Home search. Yeah. K S M. I. 
T H five seven. Do you get it okay? It's not writing in. That's... If if you have have you clicked on the text box? Oh yeah. On the what? The the search box. Sorry. The search yeah. Box. Uh, and Do then I... can can you type in it now? Do I type scratch okay. coding? So if if you if you type in scratch dot mit dot edu. Um, scratch. Let me start. Let me start. I'm sorry. No. And then, Sana, can you see the, there should be one project there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can yes. see it. There you go. So if you click on that, then you'll be in the project and, and, and that's where Mark's going to take us from. Anybody else need any help? Uh, what do I do? What do I do? Right. Okay. 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 What do I do? What do you do? So do you have can you search on the internet there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So start typing scratch dot mit dot edu yes yes okay ma idamma iru okay 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 yeah we what video? Yeah, how to type what video? Hello. Do, do I press watch video? No, so do you see have you got so have you got up the scratch website? So yeah. 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 So I see when you add the website, <clears throat> you have a search bar at the top. In the blue. Mm. Um, start creating join like that. Sham, with stories, games, and animation. Like, so do you see in the top of the screen? Then it says scratch, create, explore. Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, see the search bar beside that. Yeah. To the right of that. Create. Joints. Yes. What? Oh. This side. This side, man. This. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Are you okay, Javis? Yeah. Are we, do you have the project or the game up? I have the game up. Oh, great. great. Great stuff. Okay. Thanks. Anybody else? Anybody else having any difficulties? All okay? Yeah. Great. great. Fire away there, Kev. Or fire away there, Mark. Yeah, perfect. So I'll just wait for this. Um, so has, can everybody see this part here? Can anybody, everybody, so 
Because even when you have the game up and you see in a top right corner, it's the C inside in, in a blue block. Uh, where? So when you click and you're in the game and see in the top right of the screen, in the blue box, it says C inside. I just put a link into the same I'll screen. Find it. I put a link into to um into the group chat there with the same link that brings you the screen I'm on. Yeah. This it has to come. It has to come like that. It, yeah, okay. Yeah. Can't. Oh, now I see it. Yeah, I see it. Anybody else having any difficulties or anything? Yeah, yeah. 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 Do we have to listen to anything? Yeah, so see in the top right corner it says see inside. Yeah. See inside in the blue box. See the blue box. Yeah. Where? Oh. Can you see my screen? Yeah. yeah. See up here. Click on this. Wait. And just see inside. Um just okay. in. Give us give me one minute. Yeah, okay, take your time. Take your time. Bonnie, yeah. Search box. Search box is pretty and that part and get on get down. What do I type in search box? In search box you type in K S M I T H. K S M K S M I T M I T D five seven. Wait, what? Can you repeat K S M I T? So K S M I T H five seven. I love it. Lazy. Yeah. Yeah, search for it. Nothing found. Like the one. Let's go. Nothing found. Excuse me. Nina, can't come in. No, you can't come in. Excuse me, there's nothing found. Nothing so found. Do you see um? Do you see do you see Mark's screen there? Mark screen. Yeah. 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 And there's the yeah. title there. And just underneath that is what you need to put in the search bar. Okay. Oh, yeah. KS M90 H57. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yes. Yes. First on your video, guys. Yeah. I can write. Okay. Yes. And I. Yes. Um, I be at twice away. Yeah. That be so. Okay. Yes, I'm Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. You good? Yes. Yeah. Great, great. So click, so once you click on it and you see in the top right corner, it says see inside. Yes. Yeah, yeah. so click on see inside. Okay. Perfect. And. Do you have, do you have this on your screen now is what you're seeing as well? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, like this. So this is what we're going to uh, code today. So as you see, it's already coded for us, but we're going to take it apart like a jigsaw puzzle. Mm -hmm. So take it apart. Okay. And now we're going to try and piece it back together. And I'm going to talk you through what each piece does. So. It won't, it won't go apart. It won't go apart. So yeah. can you see as so hold the mouse and click and see if you grab it from the piece at the bottom first and put it away like that. Yeah. So yeah. like that. You put the top one and you pull them off. So yeah. Pull the bottom pieces first and jumble them all away and try and figure out what way they were. Wait, Okay. Has everybody that done? Yeah, just be me. Yeah, no problem. Take your time. Yeah, we did. Zoom. Zoom. Okay. Money, you can go. Okay. Okay. What? Okay. This farmer has to come over. Send the send. So, has everybody got that done? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So, we're going to start with the top piece here. If everyone can see this, see where it says when I receive and it says go level. Okay. Yeah. So, if you click on that arrow to the right, it tells you all the different things that coding can do. That when we go level to the ground, what or what happens when we hit the ground? As we can see, we can go if it was it could impact on something else, it could be burnt or crashed. But the fact we're landing safe and team with the team on the ground with Kai and them, that is go level. So the next part is that we never want this to change. So every time we land on the ground, we want to be landing safe. So as we put down, we make it forever. So every time we land on the ground safety, we we are safe and we are all okay. So that's where coding comes in that there's retrospect. So the way we stay, you put wait in, wait until under in forever. That doesn't change, that just means see all on the right on the left here, we have different things we can put in. Kevin was so kind to have it ready for us that when we put this together and we click the space guard together to take become. Together, when wait until a key space presses pressed means that forever, when we go level to the ground, we are safe. To change the speed that makes it as safe as possible, to, the final piece of the jigsaw is the fall speed. So let's say it, it, it falls at 10 miles an hour. If we fight it and change it to two miles an hour, it lands on the ground, that we're safe. So when we time the speed of the falls, so as it says, it crashes, it can be fuel, level, max speed. We would change the fall speed. So when the fall speed, a bit minus two, changes with the space, that forever we will always land level and safe. Does everybody understand that? Or do you want me to go through it again just to describe the coding again? Mm -hmm. I copy this. Okay, so do we just leave it at full speed? Right. 
Do we just leave it at fast speed? Yeah, no, leave it fast speed because that's the safe level. We can change speeds if we wanted to, but it mightn't be safe. So we just keep with the safe speed, just so we can learn safety when you play the game. So do you want to have a go at trying to put that back together there now? And if you need help, just come and ask me. Can you make it um, go up? Uh, we can, but we'll try and land first and then we can see if you want to try and go up then. Anybody need any help or anything? I'm done. Done. Good job. We we'll just give everyone a chance to finish a uh, minute to be finished and we can all play the game together. Done. Well done. Done. Well done, Sarah. Done. Well done. Anybody left that needs any help done. or anything? Mm -mm. Right. Done. So I'll just put it back there myself. Let's go through it again. So the way the coding works is the same way as our is our thrusters that we, David was so kind of talk about earlier, that when we land to the ground. So when the space changes with the fall speed, that forever we will land safe. So if we want to click here on the right side of the screen, and we click on this the go sign, we can all play the game together then. Land in safely. If you hold a space bar, you can get it go up if you want. But then we always have to come back down because we're landing back on mouse. Does anybody need any help play, trying to play the game or trying to get the game to play? Can you have to wait? Do we need to... Sorry? Do we need to get the rocket to go up? No, see, we're if you start the game, it starts you with the trying land, so we're landing on Mars. The oh, team's no. inside, so we want them to land safely. So, we're going to land down on the ground. Because we want to see, if you look here, there's a weird spaceship. We might want to have a look at that. So, you went and go down to Mars. So, we'll go down and have a look at that. Maybe next week, we don't know. We'll see what happens. Is everybody playing the game? It won't, my, the rocket won't go up. It won't go up. Has Have the you... rocket landed? No. So where where is the rocket at the moment, Sana? Oh, wait, yeah, I got it. Great. How do I make the rocket go? Press the space bar. Space. Oh, the one at the bottom, the big long one. The big one. Press that. Like that. Do you mean crusted controller? Sorry? Where, where is where is where is the rocket on your screen, Fabusha? The rocket. So is the rocket in the air or is the rocket on the ground? On the ground. On the ground. Okay, so if the rocket's on the ground, that means you've successfully landed. Uh, and how do they start again, Mark? Press the space bar again. And start off again. That's all. So if you're on the ground, see the big button, button press that again. And come down again. You mean the button? The button that's next to Sprite. But the button that's next to. Do you see the, you know, um, so you see the B button. B button? Yeah, the letter B, the letter B on your keyboard. Oh, hang on. Fabusha, are you using, you, you're using a tablet, aren't you? Uh, yeah. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Can does tapping the screen do anything? Uh, I don't know. If you press the green flag, it will also go uh, down. Yeah, have you have you pressed the green flag yet, actually? I didn't press the green flag. So yeah, if, if you press the green flag, that might help, and then you can tap the screen. Do I have to press the green flag? Yeah. Yes. Is that working any easier now? Yeah. Great. Thanks for that, Nathan. Thanks for that, Santa. Thanks for that, Santa. Right, are we all playing the game so? So this is just like this is like a, a a very kind of basic introduction into 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 coding, and we're just kind of we're trying to show you guys how anytime you're playing any kind of game, you know whether if you're playing if you're playing Apex Legends or Mario or whatever, like this is the kind of thing that's going on in the background. So even though from your perspective you're just controlling a character or a car or whatever. This kind of, you know, this this is a really basic way of in looking at this in Scratch, looking at this code. These are the kind of loops um, that are actually going on in the background. Um, and when you press, um, you know, the X button when you're playing Xbox or, you know, if you're using a keyboard and mouse when you're playing video games on your computer, um, this is kind of what's going on in the background. So, you know, Scratch is great. Scratch is a great resource. And there's lots of other kind of games on Scratch that you can use like this. Um, this is just our kind of really basic example of us trying to, to show you how that works. But there's loads more out there as well on Scratch, um, which we'd really recommend checking out and having a look at as well, um, if, if you think this kind of thing is interesting, um, because there's lots of great stuff out there. Yeah, spot on. So um, what we'll do now is I'll just show you, if you click on the top left, there's a Scratch button there, and we leave, and you can see all the different types of games, things of coding that you can play. That it, it might, the space mightn't be your interest, something else could be where you can find coding that will work with it and there's always guidelines and stuff to help you through. So um, we'll just move on now to, um, i just have a quick PowerPoint here on um, Asteroids. So, so does everybody, did everybody manage to get that to work with them, um, with Scratch? Give me one minute. So if everybody's happy enough with the, with the game, we're going to move on and talk, talk a bit more about space. Yeah. So if any if anyone has a problem, just drop a message in the chat and we can totally help you after or something if needs be. So um I just I just get this slide ready. So as we saw in the program there earlier, that the team are trying to get past an asteroid heat. So I'm just gonna to talk to you through a small bit about asteroids. So what exactly is an asteroid? Um, asteroids are small and rocky objects to orbit the sun. Although asteroids orbit the sun and expand, they're much oh, smaller. So, so, sorry, a second there, Mark. I, I don't think. Are, are you sharing your screen? Yeah. Uh, nice. we, we just see the um, we just see the, the the Chrome tab. I think uh, you might just be sharing Google Chrome. Yeah. Thank you very much. Let's no worries. No worries. Can you see that? Yes. Yep. So, uh, so what is an asteroid? <clears throat> As we can see here, <clears throat> asteroids are small rocky objects that orbit the sun. Although asteroids orbit the sun like planets, they are much smaller than planets. The biggest asteroid is called Ceres, 
It is about one quarter the size of the moon and orbits between Mars and Jupiter and recently called the asteroid belt. So we can imagine how big these asteroids can get. They so one size of the moon, like we can, like we're in Ireland and we think Ireland is big enough. Compare that to the size of one of them. They can be very big. Yeah. Some some of um some of them can reach, well, that's the biggest one, but some of them can only be uh, 30 meters in length. So 30, or 10 meters in circumference, which is the whole way around it. So let's say 10 meters around 30. So some of them can be very small, like there's millions of them. So it's, it's like the rest of us, there's some big, there's some small, like they're all different in their own, unique in their own way. <clears throat> can anyone, can you tell me the difference between an asteroid and a comet? Can anybody tell me there? Any, anything you know about them? Or... Is, I think one of them a, is one of them a comet and another an asteroid? Yeah, can anyone here tell me which one is which? Even oh. I, I just after talking through which an asteroid looks the like. Dark, the, dark one? One, the dark one is the, um, the asteroid and the lighter one is the comet. Well done. Very well good. Done. Um, what, why, what makes you say that? What, how did you know? Comets are smaller than asteroids. Well done. And um, I heard that um, comets, um, the, well, the comets tail always points away from the sun and the asteroids don't have a tail. The comets does. Well done. Very good. No more than I did. <laughs> So I'll just talk you through a difference of some of the characteristics so the what they are like. So an asteroid and a comet. So nearly all asteroids are regularly shaped. So that means not all of them are the same. They're um so some could be like I say big and small or some have different edges and stuff like that. Whereas a comet nearly they're all rough and they kind of look like potatoes. So if you ever look up and if you have very good eyesight and um, even look like a potato or something, it's a comet. So uh, asteroids, they're what they're made up of. They're made up of rocks with different metals, such as nickel and iron. Even though we can find them in Earth, as in our planet, there you can see they're still out in space, which is so much different. And comets are made up of ice dust, which are dark organic materials, such as carbon monoxide and methane. So once again, there's stuff that we have on Earth that we can have all around us. They're out in space millions of miles away. So what asteroids exactly are, they're leftovers from the formation of the solar system almost 4.6 billion years ago. So like when our, when our Earth and all the planets were forming, asteroids are the bits that were falling off that never made it. And comets are, are their true, they origin, originated from a vast cloud of ice and dust that surrounds the solar system. So the solar system with all the planets and stuff, all around there is a, there's a vast uh, cloud of full of ice and um, dust. And these, this is where comets come from. So they come out of this cloud and we see them come past Earth. That is, that's where we get our comets from. So, um, so can anyone tell me any events that happened between asteroids and comets throughout the world in our all the time? Well, there might be no hint here for only if someone here. Um. They say in the olden time, um, when dinosaurs were alive, an asteroid hit Earth and it blocked out the sun. So um, the plants died and making the uh, vegetarian dinosaurs die. And then the dinosaurs that eat the vegetarian dinosaurs died because they died and they had no food left. Yeah. So you're, yeah, you're very good, you, you never know a lot. So as we can see here, um, the sun graves comet uh, almost 66 million years ago, which is a very long time ago, uh, caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. And it was called Chicxulub and remains. And you can actually see off the coast of Mexico, there's actually still some of the remains of that comet in the water and at the edge of the, near the beach. So it's mad that 66 million years ago, it's still there, some parts of it. And as we can hear in Tungreska in Russia, it's small. It's, it's only small. So it's way I said. So as we can see here, I think a big comet hit the dinosaurs that time and caused all that trouble. <clears throat> Whereas only a small one, as I was saying, some of them can be only 10 meters in circumference, 
hit here and this is huge the impact of small asteroid in russia it, 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 10 million years ago and uh it hit so it did so much damage of small one that 10 million tons of natural gas came out of our earth's crust so as we can see the difference from a big and a smaller damage but either way that they can come down in such pace that they can cause so much damage and that's it's just so mad to think of so um <clears throat> could anyone tell me anything about anything about asteroid bits? One. There's one between Mars and Jupiter. Well done. As so as you can see here, we have Earth here and Mars is over here. It's just at the edge. And then we have Jupiter. And we can see here just barely the, the way it's working. So as I just go on. So around 2.7 AU from the system, the asteroid belt is, which is it's nearly 403 million or yeah, million or billion kilometers, such a big number, I can't even tell what it is nearly. <laughs> uh, Seth, uh, Seth, as you said, it's Seth Brace Mare from the Cold Giants of Jupiter and Saturn. So without them, so like the asteroid belt helps us land with our team to try and get onto Mars. If it wasn't for an asteroid belt, the guy and the team wouldn't be able to make it. If the planet wouldn't be livable. So so just to tell you the size of it, for example, an asteroid might make two full orbits. So the asteroid can go the whole way around the sun twice. And from that time, on Jupiter will only make it around once. So that shows you the size of the asteroid belt and how far away they are. Even though they look so close there, they're actually so far away from each other. It just shows you the size of space. Um, so anybody have any questions? Just to stand to the side. No. Right, I'll uh, pass you over to David there, so. Hello guys, um, thanks very much, Mark. Just before we finish up today, guys, um, I want to circle back. So anybody that was here last week, we had our bottle rocket experiment and um, this, the challenge for that is still going. So if any of you want to take a picture of your bottle rocket, you can send it into us and um, we're going to be giving out some really great prizes. Um, and. So there's, we've only had a few um, back so far. So if you do send us a picture, you're in for a really good chance of getting a really nice prize from Black Rock Observatory. So um, definitely do if you can. So we mentioned that we're also going to have a challenge for this week. So what that is going to be, guys, is you have to design a poster. Um, you can base it either on coding or you can base it on asteroids or both, whichever you prefer, and either draw or use your computer to create a poster um, and just show us some of the stuff you learned today, or maybe even some stuff you can find online yourself, and just try and get a little bit of information about um, either asteroids or coding, just to spread the word a little bit. Um, so do you think you could be able to do that, guys? Um, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, how do you do the poster? Like, do you get, just get a piece of paper and just, like, draw on it? Yeah, whichever way you prefer. So you can you can draw on it or you can use um, paint on your computer or if you have a tablet or something like that. But yeah, whichever, whichever way is easiest for you. Great, thank you. Any other questions, yeah. guys? I, I might just add, I just might add um, for, anybody who, uh, for anybody who missed our first session two weeks ago, um, I know some of you guys were there for it. Uh, which is great and it's also great because we've got way more people today than we did that time so it seems like we're getting more and more people every week which is great um, but for anybody who missed that first session we gave a bit of a, a DIY tutorial on how to make a bottle rocket um, and we talked a bit about rockets and propulsion as well we talked about like the chemistry of what happens in a bottle rocket uh, and loads of other stuff as well um, so for anybody who has an interest in that uh, that recording is on the SharePoint and um, your parents um, have a link to that. Um, so that recording is on the SharePoint, uh, the Mission to Mars SharePoint. And um, so if you ask them about that, even if you guys don't know yourselves, they'll know where to go for that. And um, the recordings are all up there. And um, so if you want to go back and have a look at that, you can find that there. Um, and then you can, the tutorial is in that for how to make a bottle rocket. Um, so if you want to go back and do that, um, and then if you can design it, personalize it, same as the poster, uh, personalize it, kind of put your own spin on it, put your own kind of design. Um, and if you take a picture of your rocket and send it on to us, um, you'll be in with a shot for some great prizes from Blackrock Castle Observatory. We've got t-shirts, we've got hoodies, 
and um, we've got some cool pens we've got some like they have some cool umbrellas and like loads of cool stuff um so if anybody wants to do that and the same thing for the poster as well if you just kind of personalize it put your own kind of design on it your own spin um, and if you send that on to us send that on to our email account um, or our sharepoint um you'll be in with a shot for some some of those great prizes as well thanks for your credit and uh from personal experience guys if you do want to go back and do that bottle rocket it's great fun <laughs> um so yeah guys that's all for today i just want to really thank everybody for coming out um i know it's it's kind of a nice day outside so to be in here and uh really learning about some space and some science and some code um it's it's a really great sign of you guys and you're all really bright individuals and i, I wish i was where you were when i was your age so um again thanks to Belina for coming out and thanks to your parents for um organizing you getting here too um and thanks to everybody else for pulling this all together. Um, our next session, guys, will be the same time next week, and it'll be given by Blackrock Castle Observatory. Um, we're going to have a really great experiment where we're all going to be designing a robotic arm, and they're also going to be teaching us a lot about what they do out of the castle and showing us a really great lesson. So um, I hope you can all make it. I've the done the robotic arm thing. Oh, brilliant. Okay, and did you find it fun? Sorry. Right. That's that's great to hear. Did you find it fun, Dermot? Yes. Great. Okay, so you you'll have you you'll have some prior experience. You can help us out with it. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant, guys. Um, do we have any questions from anybody before we go? Uh, no. Brilliant. I have. Yeah. Tell me what. Oh, brilliant. Oh, brilliant. Oh, cool. <laughs> Very cool. Well we all have some of those here as well. Yeah, you're, you're, you're matching with the team here. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Hey, guys. So thanks a million again for coming out, guys. And uh, I hope we can see you all again next week. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Brilliant. Thank you, Thank guys. You. Bye, bye bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. See you soon. Bye. 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 bye.